Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, everybody in the flight simulation community, welcome back to another news video. Today, as the title suggests, we're going to be talking about everything that is new with Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So stay tuned. What is going on guys? Flyby Simulations here and yes, we are back with another action-packed video covering all of the new features, everything that is new with Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So uh, I've been testing this simulator out now for two, three hours. I've been up since 7.50 a.m. It came out at 8 a.m. for me personally here in Vancouver, Canada. So I've been up since 7.50. I installed the update and I've been testing it out for you guys. So if you guys could appreciate all that effort, leave a little like to the video as well as subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification icon right next to the subscribe button so you guys can stay up to date with all of the flight sim news going forward but yeah over the last two hours i've seen various different improvements including performance and visuals and so on that i would like to talk about in today's video so for today's video we're going to be covering all of the key new features which includes DirectX 12 support nvidia dlss which has been hyped and hyped and hyped over the last two three months that you know we've heard from asobo as well as a n completely new setting called amd fidelity fx which is um something new something i wasn't expecting and I am pleasantly surprised with it, I have to say. So, ladies and gentlemen, right before we get started with the features, I have to say that there is a full change log uploaded on the official Microsoft Flight Simulator sort of website that I will leave a link to down in the description section of the video that you guys can go check out. In today's video, just to keep things concise and ready, we're only going to be talking about the brand new features that have been introduced to the simulator. So, again, the link to the actual full post is down in the description section of the video. There's various different things about performance, about the weather system, about the, um, you know, developer SDK and so on that are not pertinent to the majority of the community, but might actually be applicable to a small subset of the community. So if you guys want to check out everything that is new with this update, go check out that link. So number one, we have various improvements that have been worked on for DirectX 12 around stability, performance, and memory usage while they keep working on the feature, while they keep developing it. I have to say that the feature is still currently under beta. So if you go under the settings tab and if you try to cycle between DirectX 11 and 12, 12 will still say beta. And that's because the support for DirectX 12 is currently still in development according to Asobo. And, and it can show performance and GPU memory utilization regressions compared to DirectX 11 now. Due to a higher GPU memory consumption, the simulator may be oversubscribing memory in, in certain scenes, such as densely packed areas where your CPU main thread is kind of, you know, uh, clogged up, uh, which negatively impacts your performance. So if you really want to use DirectX 12 for some reason, you have to lower your graphics settings for now. Asobo has assured that they are working on this and they hope to bring DirectX 12 support natively into Flight Simulator at some point in the future. It has been improved. I have to say these are, again, first impressions. I will be making a complete performance comparison video between sim update 9 and 10 but for now i think for my first impressions DirectX 12 is improved from sim update 9 but there's a lot still left to be desired one final note on DirectX 12 also includes that their new memory allocator for DirectX 12 on pc will only be activated for nvidia graphic card users me being one of those so all of you rtx and gtx fans out there um direct 12 memory allocator for you guys will only be activated when the next driver is made available to improve the performance now other graphics cards such as AMD graphics card holders already benefit from the new allocator, so you guys don't have to do anything. We NVIDIA folks just have to wait for the new driver to roll around. We have to install it, and then maybe we can start seeing some possible performance improvements. So I'll keep you guys up to date with that. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of that. All right, so let's leave DirectX 12 out for now. For all you multi-monitor setup people, you can now add secondary windows on the left and right sides of your main window to enlarge your field of view, especially when you use several monitors. This option can be triggered via the experimental option menu in game. So that's fantastic news. I know there's a lot of home cockpit builders out there, as well as those people that just wanna use larger monitors to get that real cockpit feel. And for you guys, there's now this feature that is available natively in the sim, and I hope you guys truly, truly enjoy that. Now, next up, we have something that is extremely exciting and that completely caught me by surprise because I didn't know the underlying technology behind this. NVIDIA DLSS is now available as an anti-aliasing and upscaling option on PC. So if you go to your graphics settings and go under your anti-aliasing, previously TAA was the last setting under anti-aliasing, but now you can go ahead and switch it to DLSS and you can select between multiple presets such as quality, ultra performance, balanced, and so on. I personally leave it on quality and I've still seen uh, 10 
to 15 FPS increases as you guys are seeing in the background here I've tested this out at uh, Edinburgh Airport as you can see I get maybe 10 plus FPS at Edinburgh the difference is huge however I have to say it's still very much dependent on your CPU as you can see here in New York in the default 787 I am bottlenecked by my CPU and there's not much of a difference in FPS as I move from DLSS to not DLSS uh, however as you zoom out and you go above the entire New York skyline you can see that there are again performance improvements here so I probably have to dig deep and go ahead and try to find out what are the intricate differences between DLSS and not having DLSS as well as wait for DirectX 12 to come out and see what combination best suits my simulator and I'll probably make a video on this so you guys can make the most out of your simulators too but for now I have to say Nvidia DLSS does a fantastic job all right so next up Asobo has implemented a new cloud layer system that will provide more vertical precision at low altitudes to better reflect the various cloud altitudes and thickness close to the ground. Now, this is exciting, especially if you're at the airport environment. Sometimes if you have cirrus clouds or cumulonimbus clouds, you don't necessarily know what altitude those clouds are at. And, and sometimes the METAR information doesn't necessarily reflect what you see in SIM, which is now set to be improved. So that's exciting news. Next up, we also have some fantastic new improvements to the VFR map that has been updated to include a number of new quality of life features thanks to Working Title. Working Title is of course now officially working with Flight Simulator 2020 and Sobo to bring the G1000NXI external flight plan system as well as the actual G1000 box inside various different GA aircraft within the sim. So we're going to be talking about it a little bit later, but as you can see on screen, VFR map has seen a little bit of an improvement. You can see more airports, you can see the isolation map as well as a GPS map that you can cycle between if you do decide to do VFR flights. So exciting stuff there. Now let's talk about the G1000 NXI, which is now going to be the default G1000 in the simulator. This brings a number of features to the G1000, taking it close to the real NXI unit that exists in real life, including but not exclusively VNAV, procedure turns, holds, arc legs, visual approaches, accurate autopilot modes, full RNAV, and much, much more. This is extremely exciting stuff, and it's just a product of Asobo choosing to work with third-party developers who have specialized in certain things and being able to natively port them over to the simulator for the larger community to enjoy. Now there's an important note with the G1000 NXI. The G1000 NXI is now default in Sim Update 10. However, it will only display in default Sim aircraft equipped with the G1000. So all of you excited GA and VFR flyers out there, if you want your favorite third-party aircraft to use this G1000 NXI system inside your third-party aircraft, you're gonna have to wait, or you're gonna have to update the version of the G1000 NXI available from the marketplace to ensure you have version 0.14. Again, the link down in the description section of the video taking you to Microsoft Flight Simulator's official blog post about Sim Update 10 will explain everything very, very clearly. Moving on, now there's also new key mapping options available for the taxi and navigation ribbon visual assistances and the display of multiplayer nameplates. I normally don't use the ribbon visual assistances or the multiplayer nameplates, but for those of you guys who often use this, this is now made better with Sim Update 10. All in-game moving boats now have a wake effect on PC, which means you'll see some of the water rippling out the back as they move in a certain direction. Note that not all boats are moving in the world. Some are static objects, uh, but if you go ahead and crank up the number of boats and leisure boats in the settings window, you will now see some wake effects, especially when you're coming to land at airports, which are very, very close to the shore, such as, you know, Los Angeles or Singapore or something like that. You might now see this effect, which is very, very exciting to see. There's also low power mode, which is now available for PC users via the experimental option menu in the game. While in the menu, this option now displays a blurred image instead of the hangar in the background. Of course, that means that the GPU has to do less work. I guess this is just a quality of life improvement if you really choose to. I'm personally always plugged into my power socket, so I don't really need to go low power mode, but I guess it might help a small subset of the population. Finally, there's also a new Spotlight Event Landing Challenge that is available for you to fly, featuring the Cessna Citation CJ4 landing at Entebbe International Airport in Uganda. Due to the low cloud cover, this challenge requires the use of ILS in order to successfully land, and I'm willing to bet that the Cessna Citation CJ4 is included only because Working Title worked on this aircraft very, very closely towards the start of the Flight Simulator 2020's journey in the market. So, uh, of course, now you're going to be able to use the ILS system uh, on the new G1 
1000NXi to be able to use that and you know understand how it works and so on. So that brings us to the end of all of the major features that have been included with SIM Update 10. As you guys could see in the background, it includes some performance enhancements. However, as I said before, I will be making a full dedicated video comparing SIM Update 9 as well as SIM Update 10. And I have a tons of new videos planned, including a new graphic settings guide for SIM Update 10, as well as the combination between DLSS, the AMD Fidelity FX, as well as DX12. So just before we wrap this video up, the last thing I want to talk about is, of course, the AMD Fidelity FX12. Asobo hasn't actually gone ahead and mentioned what this does or how it works. I personally didn't even know this was going to be an included feature with this update. However, when I went into my graphics settings, I noticed that it was there. And what it does is that with a negligible impact on FPS, uh, it basically sharpens various textures without actually sharpening textures that you wouldn't want sharpened. I don't know if that makes sense, but what this basically means is that even if you put the slider all the way to 200, you will see everything crystal clear, including ground markings and textures and even airport signages and all of that. But the clouds, for example, will not be sharpened and you won't see the grainy textures on the cloud. So it's it's selective sharpening. It's a little bit different than what Nvidia sharpening does and it's available on all systems. I know it says AMD Fidelity FX, but it's available for everybody. And I've tested this out. I tried it out with 150, 175, and then I cranked it up all the way to 200. I didn't really notice too big of an impact on my FPS, but I did notice that my sim looks a whole lot better and a whole lot crisper with this. So I encourage you guys to try it out. Leave it down in the comment section below how you guys found this feature as well as the rest of the sim update 10 experience for you lot. So let me know in the comment section below. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So with that, we have covered Sim Update 10. Of course, this was a very first impressions video just to give you guys a taster of what this update includes. If I miss something, please let me know down in the comment section below and I would be happy to take that into consideration and, you know, pin that as a comment so that other people can know what Sim Update 10 is all about. As I said before, you guys enjoyed this video, but I'm going to be working tirelessly to get new videos up to you guys as soon as possible, covering various different settings and all of that stuff to make your simulators function and look the best they can. In the meantime, a like rating on this video would be massively appreciated and a subscription would go a long way to making my videos appear on more people's channels and for me to help out more of the community going forward. With that all said, thanks for watching the video and thanks for flying by.